Hey up, stranger. How you doing? Oh, busy with work, eh? Well, that time of year, isn't it? Everyone running around trying to get stuff done. Finishing off all them last minute projects. Before the inevitable Christmas rush. Tiring business, that. But now a pipe won't fix. How special. There you go. Yeah. Looks like something's vexing thee. No. Well, you know what they say. Problem aired is a problem shared. What's that? It's nothing. Well, you tell yourself that. The way you're staring at that glass tells some of a different story. But you know full well the solution ain't going to come from bottom of tankard, don't you? Ah. Uh, so now we get to the crux of it. So you think someone's leading you down the garden path, eh? Ah, but you can't be sure. Right, right. Let me guess. Everything the Italian you can be backed up by cold hard facts and figures. But still, there's something that just don't add up. Something nagging. Not quite cautious. Hmm. Well, what a quandary that is. <clears throat> Here, I ever tell you about that weird experience me and my mate had back when we were nippers? No. Oh, sure I did, you know. Anyway, we're back in 1978. I was living in Stoke for me sins. I'd found work as a saga maker's bottom knocker. Here, don't laugh. It were a real job. For the Wedgwood Company. Not long moved into the area. Ah. Oh, graft that job. But it were a rate good crack, I can tell you. Ended up befriending this lad. Aaron, his name. His mum and dad were quite high up in the company had landed him a good job in the production line. They were quite well off, and as such, Aaron didn't really take his job too seriously. Anyway, I digress. As had not long passed his driving test, his parents had bought him this brand new Talbot Sunbeam. Of course, they look like bangers now, but back then it was quite the piece of kit. So one Friday afternoon, Az comes over to me and says, Here, you want to get off early, take the sunbeam for a spin up in the peaks? Knowing the foreman wouldn't mind, I said, Ah, why not? So around 3pm, jumped in the car and went exploring. Put the sunbeam right through its paces. A great little goer, I can tell thee. Burning round them lonely country roads, deep purple, zeppelin and sabbath, blaring out the tape deck. Now, we'd just driven through the small village of Flash and were heading towards the market town of Leek, when all of a sudden, right in the middle of nowhere, Sunbeam's engine just goes flat. Of course we were quite puzzled brand new car and all that so he gets out as flips the car's bonnet we have a look at what's occurring engine's fine oil's fine now noticeably wrong so as gets back in the car and attempts to start it up again nothing well as you can imagine we were at a loss. That's when I spots this decrepit phone box. You know, 
One of them old red ones. Rare sight these days. So what says to us? Here. You with the AA? Good idea, he says. So we step into the little kiosk. I sticks a coin in the slot. As picks up the receiver. Dials in number for the AA. Gets an output static. And suddenly he slams the receiver down. Gives me this worried look. What's up, I says. Swear I heard a voice. Through the static. Alright. What did it say? He shrugs at me. Sounds like spark plugs. Hmm. Spark plugs. Strange, eh? So we walk back over to the car. Carry on looking over the engine. Pretty concerned by this point as it's starting to go dark. That's when we heard some kind of off voice. Carried on the wind. Shh. You hear that? I says to us. Ah, uh, I heard it, he says. So he scans the surroundings. Not but farmers' fields all around. Then as nudges me and says, Here, look, over in yonder field. And lo and behold, standing bang in the centre, this huge black ram. Thick gnarled horns curving skyward, and it's looking right at us. Of course, your mind starts putting two and two together, doesn't it? Especially in times of stress. But surely not. Not the ram. As duck back under the bonnet, looking desperately for some anything that might be wrong with the engine, the voice came again. I was sure by now the voice were coming from the direction of the field that contained the ram. It were by the gate now, its dark gaze fixed upon us. And that voice again, roaring above the wind. Somewhat freaked out, I barked. The Sparkies has. Just look at the Sparkies. For goodness sake, man. So we did. His trembling hands fumbling with them. One by one, he gave him a quick check. And put them back. Quick as a flash, we were back in the car. Started first go. out of there like scolded cats as it the accelerator that hard he near put his foot through the bloody floor wasn't long before we reached the town of leak need to steady me nerves jack as says to me i weren't gonna disagree so we stopped off at an establishment called the swan with two necks it's a jd weatherspoons now Renamed the Green Dragon. Interestingly enough though. That were its original name back in the 1600s. Nice to know spoons as a respect for history. But once again I digress. So he enters the pub. 
goes up to the bar and orders a good stiff drink. The barman looks at us both and says, Yeah, you two look white as sheets. What's happened? You wouldn't believe us if we told you, as chimes back. Up near Flash, were you? The barman says. Had a breakdown, did you? By field, the red telephone box. Aye, we says in unison. A little bit shocked. Oh, lads, he said. Leaning in close. No, lads. You have no idea how lucky you are to be standing here right now. For in the field, there be a ram, black as coal, with horns that had put old Nicks to shame. And that ram, that black ram, knows fuck all about cars. <laughs> Bloody had you then, didn't I? <laughs> Your face. Hook, line and bloody sinker. <laughs> Goes to show though, don't it? The best lies are always hidden beneath the most mundane of truths. Don't be blinded by facts. Go with your gut and you won't go far wrong. So you having another? No. Oh well. I understand. Got a few big decisions to make, I'd wager. Well, you know where I am if you need out. Just ring that there bell. Have a good un. I'll be seeing you.